Hi, my name is Tim Carter. I pastor Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas. And this is the Apologetic and Outreach Ministry. We call it that. It's actually the work of doing the Great Commission. We have now gone into over 140 countries, much more than our apparent limit of faith uh, expected. And the scope of the work's increasing and we're trying to keep up another book publication forthcoming on the book of Romans. It appears in the Calvinist Arminian banter. They seem to have a flummox, several in the book of Romans. Those contradictions aren't actually there, <clears throat> but the book will be self-evident. and It'll also be a uh, free PDF downloadable format. And so I, I, we found a lot of people disappointed with how self-evident the Bible is, but we're a New Testament church, so basically the New Testament church versus any type of ministry out there is not fair because, uh, for example, William Lane Craig of Reasonable Faith, as admirable as that is, as scholastic as he is, we don't expect from him what we know in the New Testament church. The New Testament church is a pillar in the ground of the truth, not fallible constructs, so it's a philosophical theological blend his work is. Uh, I prefer him as a philosopher. Uh, his faith is Christianity. That's great. I enjoy that. Uh, but Molinism, it's fallible. And of course he would know, he would admit that nothing but the scriptures are infallible. So AIG, Answers in Genesis, this has been very unusual because the New Testament church is the pillar and ground of the truth. Christ is the head of our church. Holy Spirit comforters here with us. And individuals who know Christ outside of a New Testament church definitely know Him through the Holy Spirit and have the Spirit of Christ. But we're speaking of the leadership of the Holy Spirit unique in the New Testament church under the headship of Christ. So that's really not fair when people ask me questions about AIG. Jesus isn't the head of AIG. He, Holy Spirit, wasn't sent to come and work alongside Paracletos, call alongside uh, to lead and guide the uh, AIG Answers in Genesis organization, nor any other type thing like that. So it was very interesting when I first was accused of being an old earther and the religious mind, it's always in flummox. It, it never, it can never be single, it can never be united. And that's just the nature of an unredeemed, unregenerated mind. So, I responded, what's an old earther? They said, well, you said you believe the gap theory. I said, no, I said there were more than one gap theory. There's multiple ones, which one are you referring to? Well, of course, the religious mind was in flummox again because they never can seem to get the two wires to connect at the time they're making accusations. And the word accusation comes from category, the Greek word, transliterally spoken category, like categorize or category in our language. So I said, well, what's the accusation? Well, again, they didn't, they hadn't thought. They were jumping, recoiling as their fight adrenaline was pumping there and telling them to fight this man because I'm a student of the Word of God, I'm a teacher of the Word of God, I'm a pastor of one of the Lord's churches. Of course, I'm something to oppose. I'm something that arouses in people who aren't led by the Spirit, who don't have a new mind, a new heart, and are void of the Spirit of God is what they are. They, they have to react, lash out against us who are on the earth as ambassadors for Christ. I live for me to live is limited and bind by Christ, and for me to die is an advantage for Christ. So, uh, when your life is Christ-centered, whether you're living or dead or gone, it provokes the same thing. I've even seen people criticize men, not even knowing that those men have passed away. But the person then didn't know how to even define the accusation. I said, well, what text in the Bible am I not supporting since you're so concerned about gap theories and age dating of the earth because I was trying to help the poor dark soul because they seemed only interested in assaulting the person at hand 
attacking the person that was there who's faithful uh, husband to my wife father to my children pastor in the church brother in the new covenant a believer of the true and correct message the gospel of Jesus Christ biblically baptized not just simply something called believers baptism but Bible baptism by a New Testament church uh, conformed to the image of Christ a fellowship into the gospel of Christ I've grown up to the full measure of the stature of Christ I moved on unto completion the maturity that the book of our covenant the book of Hebrews teaches I've been renovated, transformed by the renovation of my mind. I've been freed to serve God with my mind now for years and years. So this dark soul could not even explain what was the accusation. What, what's the content of the accusation? And then I realized that they needed help. So I gave them references to people in the church that might want to join them in speaking with me. So it became more than one person. And again I ask them what's the accusation what text in the Bible am I not supporting well they had been primed and charged by the new fallible religious construct called young earth creationism and so charged were they and so emotive about it they didn't know that previously let's say 15 years ago perhaps my experience was with Noah and the flood being typed artificially by the way by religionists who typecast the Noah and the flood with something called a brand of fallible religious constructs called rapturism so that when you mention Noah and the flood they would they had taught people to think rapture so I told them I could not speak of Noah and the flood historically because it had been typecast by religionists who had modified it and used the story to promote rapturism. And I told them, I said, it looks like I'm not able to teach Noah and the Flood historically now because you all are thinking it's about dating the earth. Well, of course, uh, that really perplexed them and they were more confused than ever. I said, well, since Noah actually lived on the earth, since the Flood actually occurred, since the Bible itself includes that account the Noahic covenant I asked them did you ever hear about Noah and why he was on the ark with his family and no one else well no and I asked them if they had ever heard about historically a man named Peter the Apostle well of course they did I said well did you know his letters are real actual letters the first and second letter of Peter well they said well of course they are I said well did you know in 1st Peter 321 the Bible typecast Noah and the ark by referring to our baptism that we as New Testament churches exclusively and uniquely practice called anti-typical immersion they said they never heard of it I said well because the scriptures that we the New Testament churches teach and practice as actual history knew that Peter was a real person he was an apostle who followed Jesus People in those days, there were actual churches, just like there are today, called out bodies of baptized believers, covenant together. Now they're a little bit dazed because they were thinking that they were teaching Noah and the ark historically. I said, not when you use it for something that is not what the Bible teaches because now you're taking a historical event or a person or a character or even an ark or the flood event and you're typecasting it for your own purposes. Well, then you have to abandon the Bible that should be read as history in the New Testament as well. So they said, what are you saying, Pastor? And I said, well, as a pastor of one of the Lord's New Testament churches, the New Testament church has the truth and is the pillar and the ground of the truth. So I said, AIG Answers in Genesis is an organization. It's led by a theme park director, uh, a man named Ken Ham. Ken Ham has typecast the ark and he's asked should we read Genesis as history it's just that it's like a red herring it's a distraction because should we read the book of Genesis as history and then forget about the letters of the New Testament that were written so that God's people would know about something called anti-typical immersion and they just looked at me I said well did you know that Noah was saved through water 
well, Vericar, we don't believe in baptismal regeneration. I said, well, I did not say Noah was regenerated through water. They said, oh, well, Brother Carter, we believe it's symbolic. I said, it did not say Noah was symbolically gestured through water. It said Noah was saved through water, delivered from the tyrannical hordes. Literally, historically, if people would read the Bible as history. And I said, what do you think it means when it says that we, in like figure, we, according to anti-typical immersion, are delivered? And they had never heard because they didn't. They were not taught to read the Bible as history and historic Christianity. They were not taught. So they were taught and fell for an old trick similar to when the rapturist captured and typecast Noah and the Flood and said, look at Noah and the Flood if you want to understand the rapture. And you're like, there's no connection to the letter to the Thessalonians in the first letter of Thessalonians as it's called. In the fourth chapter, the 17th verse, it speaks of we which are alive, the living ones, the ones who are remaining around, will be seized away simultaneously together with them, speaking of the dead in Christ who were raised first. And I says, ask my accusers, do you all believe that the book, the letters, first and th second Thessalonians should be read as history? They say, yes. I said, well, history whether it's in the past or in the future as Paul was referring to what would happen in the future why did I said why do you think religious fallible constructs like rapture theories influence people to not follow Thessalonians as a book that should be read as history true history from God again I'm only saying that because someone and now now know it was a man named Ken Ham from AIG. Again, it's not his fault. That organization does not have Christ as its head. It is not a called out body of baptized believers. That is, it's not the body of Christ. It's not an expression of the body of Christ. It's an organization. And it's a religious organization. And it has not any obligation to follow and keep covenant. Which is ironic because that's what Noah was doing that found him in the eyes of God finding favor, grace, and being placed on the boat. And ironically today, if you believe, as I was telling these poor souls who had never been discipled and had only been commercialized, not commissionalized, I told them, I said, that if your interest in Noah and the ark and what the story historically was about and how it was taught in the New Testament historically to real churches, and practiced and lived according to then I said you would know that keeping covenant is the importance of that message anti-typical I mean anti refers to correspond so our baptism as New Testament churches who administer this baptism and who are the proprietors of this baptism through this baptism anti-typical baptism this baptism corresponds in type to what the flood was for Noah in actuality. And I told them that if our ties aren't severed as those who are called out, those who have been redeemed and blood bought through the blood of the Lamb, if we don't sever our ties, then we suffer the same liabilities to, by remaining in association with or connected with that from which the blood of Christ had purchased us. Well, now my accusers have said, well, we've never heard this before. I said, well, it's because people don't teach Noah and the ark historically they don't teach it as a historical narrative because after they're finished with what they want to use of it in the past they recently as I know in my experience it was maybe a dozen or 15 years ago you couldn't talk about knowing the ark without it being used today not for the historical purposes of the New Testament letters and the teachings of scriptural baptism and the prevalence of the Lord's churches and the keeping of covenant today with God in His covenant community, which is only one covenant people. So the whole historic narrative of Noah and the Ark was lost because they they made it about rapturism. And I was accused then when I would talk about Noah and the flood, especially if you went to Matthew 24, you couldn't talk about Noah and the flood and as it were in the days because ironically, it's just like it was in those days. Nobody wanted to be keeping the covenant. Nobody wanted to be uh, 
upright in their generations. Uh, no one wanted to stay left out of the crowd and, and which way uh, the mainstream was going. Everyone was interested in rather doing their own thing. So I would try to teach about the implications of the days of Noah and all they could talk about was rapturism. And I said that's a concurrent event if you believe the letters First and Second Thessalonians should be read as history. And I told them, you all are very big on a man named Ken Ham, the director of a theme park, the leader of a AIG organization, but you're not very uh, receptive and respectful to a pastor of one of the Lord's New Testament churches. Uh, Christ is the head of this organization, the church, uh, which technically is an organization. We're a living body, the body of Christ, an organism, if you will. Under his headship, accompanied by his Holy Spirit, that is, as the comforter, being led and guided into all truth, not truth to be uh, expanded upon, that is, we have all the scriptures and that has been provided us, but led into those scriptures to regard them. So then I told them that now I can't talk about the antitypical immersion, which is essential to severing one's ties to then participate in the covenant keeping, which is about Noah and the ark. And I said, so we are still as we were in the days of Noah. And I haven't figured out what the accusation is because Old Earth, or I had never heard of it until I asked them, had they not heard of the new Young Earth movement, they would have never had a concept to accuse me of Old Earth, which shows the irrationality of it all. But it is true that the debate about insisting on Young Earthism is exemplary to the fact of as the days of Noah because just recently, a dozen years ago, you couldn't talk about Noah and the ark without rapturism, rapturism, and I was like, baptism, baptism. They couldn't hear it. They were not interested in covenant keeping, and they weren't interested in the covenant keeping practices of Noah, which are historical realities. And so I asked them, I said, you're saying it's important to read Genesis as history, but not to read the remainder of the Bible as history? And if Ken Ham, whoever this man is, and I'm not faulting him, if I were the director of something called AIG, I wouldn't expect the advantages and benefits and blessings of the New Covenant Church, and certainly not the knowledge that you can only find in a New Testament church. Uh, the truth that I have been entrusted today and still advocate has been entrusted to Landmark Missionary Baptist Church uh, through churches now up until 2017. And the Old Testament doctrines that the people that entrusted us, the Jewish believers who came out and followed Christ, uh, were entrusted those teachings. So it's, uh, it's strange how ironic it is to take someone like a commoner, I am koine.org, was why we named our uh, commissional outreach global internet venue. It's very ironic that as in the days of Noah now we find the rapturism is now cooled off. It's now that fallible constructs moved to another part of the shelf and Tim LaHaye's passed away literally last year and I'm sorry for what he left behind because he won't be able to erase all that and that just keeps marching on and it was a time where you know people wanted to read a book about left behind and all the sensational hollywood movies but they didn't seem to want to be baptized and when i said what does the rapture have to do with people who are not interested in scriptural baptism people just were like appalled they were they literally had been taught that it's more important to talk about rapturism which is one concurrent event according to those who read the Bible as history, then, so they want to talk about that, but not baptism and being in covenant keeping relationship. They didn't care about parables. They didn't care about five foolish virgins. Uh, they didn't care about people who didn't come out and sever their ties. They didn't care about the persecution of the Lord's churches for 2,000 years. They mocked the trail of blood as though you can't teach that as history. Well, I didn't say I could support those who tried to pin it together. I can just say that Jesus taught the trail of blood from the time of Abel to Zechariah 
and he said that in his lifetime and no one asked him to connect the dots and so we don't have to connect the dots we know the trail of blood is historical we know it's true we don't have to prove that every person can, can pin it all together connect the dots through baptisms but it is remarkable we can prove and demonstrate churches for the last 2000 years if you read the bible as history and if you accept the bible as history and that the historical typology that's in the Bible, the real actual typology, not typecasting the ark as rapturism, some pre-tribism, and it's not to be typecast as ageism of the earth, because now some people are even taking seriously October 23rd, 4004 as the date the earth was born, and that's just dating like people do the end times, they're just dating the four times, and it's uninspired information it's completely fallible and it does not trust the Bible to be historically reliable so if the Bible uh, ty types something and says that our baptism is anti-typical our baptism is anti-typical referring to Noah and the flood and that our baptism delivers us that is it does not sim symbolically gesture us it does not regenerate us but it anti-typically we have this deliverance in type that Noah had in actuality. But now again, I don't expect Ken Ham to be known for promoting New Testament churches. You couldn't pay for an ark doing that. Uh, you couldn't get people to come to your theme park if you told them that the churches they were in were not even churches. You certainly couldn't get them to want to come to your theme park if they found out you didn't even recognize their baptisms which aren't even baptisms. I don't mean that they didn't go underwater. I don't mean that they weren't someone who believed in Jesus and let someone put them underwater, but they had no interest in being baptized historically as the Bible is to be read and practiced and believed and practiced historically. You'd probably have not very many people there. It's uh, interesting how a uh, missionary Baptist, a missionary Baptist like myself, is now mocked by missionary Baptist, and I thought it was kind of funny because it, I'm kind of you know outgrown all those little things, and now I know the text well and I've grown upwardly in Christ, and I can prove and demonstrate that the Scripture interprets Scripture, and I don't have to be involved in age of the earth. I can be involved in the historical truth about Noah and the ark which Ken Ham is not true to the text historically and everyone knows that because everyone knows your market would shrink so drastically it'd be like saying that's why the rapturism of today is all saved all some large huge umbrella and it has distinguishes no benefit of being a member of one of the Lord's New Testament churches so in 1956, I still have the book when uh, the pastor, Dr. Lynn Baxter, was here at Landmark in 1987 speaking of the importance of church perpetuity, which is actually the prevalence of the churches. And we do prevail, even AIG, Answers in Genesis. We prevail Ken Ham. We prevail Young Earth Creationism. We prevail multiple creation theories. Uh, we prevail rapturism. But we prevail it because it's the vital uh, essential reality that we must prevail because the covenant keeping is what God honors. So if you're interested in believing and knowing the ark historically, but you don't hear people talking about keeping the covenant, you don't talk about the anti-typical immersion, they're not really talking about Noah and the ark in the historical context in which it appears. And to this date, uh, I am Cornet.org, Landmark Missionary Baptist Church has not received any feedback from anyone why what is the accusation of old earther since we don't have anything in the scriptures that teach us that that's even a good phrase much more a valid accusation because we don't know of what scripture it is that we're failing to uphold as one of the lord's new testament churches the pillar and the ground of truth so that good news in mind if you really want to believe noah and the ark historically um, Probably stop accusing people of being old earthers and trying to trigger a reaction against your young earthism and maybe 
listen carefully and say, hey, I've noticed they're not talking about covenant keeping. And they're not talking about New Testament baptism. Anti-typical immersion. They're not talking about the correct message, the gospel of Jesus Christ, because people that mix works with it are good consumers. Uh, people who teach different ways of baptism than what the Bible historically teaches, which is in the context of the Noahic narratives, then I can see why people like to fall for, oh my gosh, I, I don't want to be guilty of not reading Genesis as history. I don't want to be guilty of not being a young earther. Well, you might want to take seriously what the Bible talks about. Because if people took as seriously uh, whatever it is they pretend is so much at stake by not picking a young or old earth position, if they took baptism that seriously, if they took the Lord's New Testament church that seriously, if they took the gospel of Jesus Christ and our responsibility to hold fast our profession of faith and guard that gospel, guard his teachings, and they'd probably be as bored with the uh, silliness as Landmark Missionary Baptist Church is. So you have a good day and have a blessed day. And if you really are interested in the Bible, is reading it as history, then I'd say read it past and beyond chapter 1 of Genesis. And have a blessed day.